And still on corruption, a very a federal high court in Abuja, the federal capital of Nigeria, has granted 100 million naira bail uh, each to a former minister of aviation, Hadi Sirika, his daughter, and two others. They are being tried over an alleged fraud to the tune of 2.7 billion naira. According to the court, they are also to provide two shorties who must have landed properties in Abuja. The court also restricted the defendants from traveling abroad without its permission. The trial will commence on the 10th, 11th, and 20th of June. Counsel to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Rotimi Jacob, spoke on the bail conditions granted by the court. One of the two cases filed against the former minister. So the first one is taken before this, this lordship here. So we are going to contend for the other one in another date. So, but the bill is at the discussion of the court. So it's for the court to decide whether it is adequate or not. So a counsel in his own right cannot criticize the judge whether the, the conditions are liberal or high or low. But I think it is fair. Yes, thank you. Well, there, there are other, there are other um, um, issues that are that, that were introduced, like the the Nigerian Airways um, with Ethiopia something, which we had to hit, so it was not there originally. But Nigerian Air matter is uh, there are two counts on it. That's why we amended it. The condition that one of the shorty must own property in Abuja and must. Um, deposit um, some, some uh, money out or, or um, bond and all those things. So it's, uh, it's, I don't think it's a, it's a strenuous, um, it's, it's a condition that is unfair. It's very fair to them. And to discuss this further, I'm being joined by Elvis Asia. He's a legal practitioner and he joins me live via video chat. Elvis, a very good morning to you. Let's get started quickly. I mean, you are a legal you know, practitioner. You are in the field. What were your initial uh, thoughts on the accusations levied against uh, Hadi Sirika and his daughter and the two other people regarding the alleged uh, 2.7 billion naira fraud? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I think the allegations are very serious allegations. Uh, if you look at the trajectory of this country in terms of corruption and the stunted growth that is has orchestrated and the industry that is imposed on Nigerians, these are very serious allegations. And then if you don't take your mind back to uh, the Nigerian Airways uh, debacle, you know, uh, that movie that was acted, um, you know, which was very nauseating to the sensibilities of uh, reasonable members of the public like, uh, like us. Uh, so it's, yes, these are serious allegations. And it's a good thing that um, uh, they are being prosecuted and, you know, in accordance uh, with, the, with the law. Um, it is hoped that the EFCC would, um, apart from just making allegations like we have seen in the past, that they would do a thorough investigation, a thorough job in prosecuting and ensuring that um, they are able to get conviction. Uh, making an allegation is one thing, uh, being able to substantiate it in court of law is a very is a different uh, issue entirely. Um, so, you know, um, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, they've gotten to this stage of um, uh, arraying them and then, um, you know, facing the trial. Proper. I mean, uh, there's been uh, mixed reactions uh, with Nigerians. I mean, you see it on social media and, and so so on and so forth regarding um, the 100 million Naira bill uh, per person that was accused. But how significant is, the, is this bill, or rather this bill of the amount of 100 million Naira set for Hadi Sirika and his daughter in relation to the allegations against them? And what factors typically influence the determination of bill in such cases? Uh, firstly, we have to appreciate the fact that, um, in generally speaking, when a bail bond amount is announced like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to pay it, unless that is part of the conditions given, which is uh, very rare. The idea is that you, you know, give the bond um, and to, almost like an undertaking, that the person will be brought to court uh, to face his or her charges or trial. So if, the, for whatever reason, uh, you are unable to produce a person, then you may forfeit that bond. That means that you have to pay that money, or if you have, if you have paid it, you will lose, you will lose it. So it's really uh, nothing new. Um, I don't think the, the amount is um, too much. Um, I think, given the nature of the offense that for which uh, the minister and the other people have been um, uh, tried, 
I don't, I don't think it's, uh, it's too out of place to place that amount. So I want to believe that the minister will have people uh, that will be able to meet that condition. But again, people are justified to, um, uh, you know, on some, on some respect, criticize the amount of big bonds that we do in this country, especially for small offenses. Uh, you know, we, we practice law on a daily basis, and we see so many people are unable to be bail terms uh, because of uh, street bail conditions. Uh, so, in determining bail, the court must look at the nature of the charges. Um, you know, the proof of evidence that you know is attached to those charges, which uh, will go to show whether or not there's something substantial against the, the person, and then the, the probability that the person would uh, run away from these are charges. So. Um, and that depends on the facts and the evidence that is placed before the court in the applications filed um, by the best, by the defendant for bail, and as well as the information supplied uh, by the EFCC. So these are some of the things that the court um, will look at in determining uh, bail, bail conditions. Uh, but looking at the, um, the charge in this case, and considering the, the seriousness of the offense, I don't think it's um, too out of place. Um, like you said, allegations, accusations, uh, you know, these are just what they are. But what legal avenues are available to Hadi Sirika and his daughter to address, uh, you know, these allegations or accusations and to defend themselves in court? Well, the legal avenue available is the trial process, which has now been, they've been arraigned, just uh, an arraignment. So the prosecution now has the uh, responsibility to establish the case, and they will now come forward to also defend themselves uh, to establish that look, you know, all of these allegations are mere, are uh, just mere allegations. So um, they, they have a, a legal team. Um, they will call their witnesses if they have one. They can testify for themselves if they feel that would serve um, their interest. And so that is the process that is available to them. Um, yes, there's a presumption of innocence under the constitution, but you know, in order to ensure that people are able to face their trial, the courts have the duty to ensure that uh, there's a meeting grounds, which is why you have paid terms and conditions. So the mere fact that somebody is a paid terms in court doesn't mean that the offense has been established against you, doesn't mean that you are guilty. It's just a system put in place by society uh, to ensure that people don't run away from their trial and that the uh, court process is respected uh, by people who are, have been charged. So they have the opportunity uh, to defend themselves in the course of uh, cross examining the prosecution witnesses, um, you know, and then showing that um, they, perhaps they acted within the bounds of uh, their duties in the course of preventing their public service. So, uh, you know, the floor is open to them. They, they, they can put up their defense. If they feel that the EFCC hasn't uh, done anything in terms of uh, proof, then they can do a no case submission and uh, urge the court to dismiss the charges. Uh, so those are the, some of the things that are open, in, are open to the defendants and the uh, uh, judge in this case uh, to defend herself against the charges that have been preferred by EFCC. Right. Now, this case has, uh, it has high profile individuals, in, and this time the former Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, and it includes his families as well. Um, so. What challenges do you anticipate for both, you know, the persecution and the defense, you know, during the legal proceedings? Well, for the defense, as you are aware, you know, you know, it's um, for you to secure conviction against an, an accused person or a defendant under our jurisprudence. You have to do much more than just making the allegation. You have to prove it beyond uh, reasonable doubt. So that means that it must be proved that the offense for which. Uh, she's been charged, could not have been committed by somebody else. In fact, in the first place, you have to establish that she committed it and that it could not have been done by somebody else. Um, it's always very difficult with um, public prosecution in this country. We have seen instances where allegations are made very focused ones at, at that, and uh, a few years after the trial commences and the cases are discharged and uh, the accused person is discharged and acquitted, we have hard cases like that. So the problem we have uh, on the prosecution side is the defense is, is um, uh, you know proper investigation having concrete evidence uh, because we are just too sentimental yes it's true that there's a high rate of corruption in the system but that's not what is going to secure your conviction as a prosecutor what will secure your conviction is the proper investigation that has been done hard evidence that has been collated and that is properly uh, tendered before the court and we've always had that challenges because you know 
prosecution, prosecution in this country, uh, I don't know whether, they, whether it's funding, or I don't know whether it's um, uh, training, I don't know whether it's, um, you know, uh, maybe an attempt to also corrupt the system because we, we have, it's very embarrassing to see that charges are filed and then they are not sustained in terms of the proof. On the defense side, um, you know, I mean, the law already presumes them to be innocent. So uh, the duties of the prosecution, so the, the, the big obligation actually is on the prosecution. And all the defendant needs to do in, in a trial like this is to sit back and uh, just show that what the prosecution is saying, uh, you know, put the debt you know, on, on the prosecution's case. And so, um, you know, the challenges essentially is for the prosecution to establish the case. It's really not the defender. The defendant, you know, being a public servant, uh, would take advantage of whether or not, you know, uh, any contract in respect of which these funds have been have removed, whether or not there were proper procurement processes were followed, uh, there were, you know, directives from the president or whoever was in charge. So at the end of the day, it's always very difficult to uh, secure conviction. So the prosecution then have a very big burden uh, to prove. So it's, it's the challenge actually on the prosecution side in cases like this. Elvis, many thanks for coming. I appreciate you for doing this with us. Thank you for having me.